Today, let's take a look at all of the beneficial bacteria that can be found in a newly cycling aquarium. Don't go anywhere. What is up YouTube and all my fish keeping friends? How is everybody doing out there in fish tank land? Well, I have these two aquariums here in my office. They're both pretty new. They're just cycling. I just want to show you guys just how dirty they are. I got to get them cleaned up today for sure. Now I put this rock goby in here, I believe it is. And it totally trashed the scape. You can see there's all kinds of uh, substrate that came up out of the sand because he's digging holes all over the place. I got to get him out of here. So that's going to happen today for sure. But you can see on the front of this aquarium that there is some brown stuff on the glass. The green stuff right there in the middle is on the rock, but the brown stuff is on the glass. That's diatom. I really want to see what's on the glass of this aquarium. You can see that there's some little white stuff. Those are probably little infusoria microorganisms. And then that brown stuff, the little splotches of brown stuff around the tank on the glass, that's diatoms. Those are single-celled organisms, more like a, a, a plankton, and they do uh, you know, convert photosynthesis. So uh, that's gonna be interesting. So I wanna take a look at this tank under the microscope. And then the second tank that we're gonna look at is this plant quarantine tank that I put together here in my office as well. Yeah, I got a pretty heavy duty light on it. So all that light is definitely causing some algae. I expected this, it's, it's a new tank. There's shrimp in here, some Neocaridina red cherry shrimp, as well as some, uh, I believe there's some ram's horn snails in here. So you can see all of the green algae there on the glass. We're gonna take a look at some of that under the microscope as well. I gotta do a water change on both of these tanks and clean up the glass anyways. So we're gonna take a look at both of these aquariums under the microscope and just see what's going on in these newly cycling aquariums. So I went down to the lab, I got a few eyedroppers and I also have this uh, paint scraper. I love these things. If you keep them clean, these razor blades will last for a good bit. I'm gonna go ahead and take one of these. I'm gonna scrape uh, the diatoms and the you know microorganisms infusoria off of the glass and at the same time i'm going to be sucking up all of that sludge all of those organisms with an eyedropper so i'm going to do this first tank which this is actually the first tank that i added to the office here so i have four eyedroppers i'm going to go ahead and use two of those eyedroppers for this aquarium and i'll use two of the eyedroppers for this aquarium over here. So I'm definitely gonna go ahead and get some of these diatoms that are here on the glass. And then on top of that, you know, in the other eyedropper, I wanna go ahead and collect some of these microorganisms that I see here, all this white stuff here on the glass. I'm really curious as to what that is. Okay, so I'm down here in the lab where I keep the microscope. I have the four samples, uh, two for one aquarium for the first aquarium and two samples for the second aquarium. And so we're gonna go ahead and lay those out on slides and we're gonna see what they look like on the microscope. I have a computer hooked up here as well. I'm using this Omax microscope. I got it off of Amazon. I'm gonna have a link for that in the description below. You can check that out yourself. Uh, it comes with a five megapixel camera it's a 5.2 megapixel camera, as I believe what it says there. It's a nice microscope. It goes up to 100 times with the microscope uh, camera here, but you can get up to um, 2,500 times uh, with different lenses here as well. Uh, it does dark field, and that's where I like to work, is mostly in dark field, because it just kind of gives you more of a three-dimensional image of what you're looking at. So there's a couple of different slides that I like to use. Uh, there's your traditional flat slide, and there's also this concaved slide. This one's a dirty slide here, but you can see maybe that it has a little indention in it, and that helps when you're working with specimens that are not quite flat. You can't put a piece of glass on top of them without uh, you know, the glass sticking up. So this works well for that. So I have this snazzy little adapter here that goes onto the Sony that I'm filming with right now. I have to say thank you to all of my members and my Patreons for all of your support. It made it possible for me to purchase this little adapter. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this camera that I'm filming 
filament with right now. I'm gonna add this adapter to it and we're gonna put it right on top of this trinocular microscope. And we're gonna be able to take a look at all four of these samples under this microscope in dark field. So you're looking at the first specimen from the first aquarium. This is mostly diatoms and that's the brown colored stuff that you see here within the screen and then on top of that you're going to also see some paramecium's running around and even some other maybe smaller paramecium and other microorganisms we're going to go ahead and take a little closer look let's go ahead and go in at 10 times so now we're looking at the same area but at 10 times and you can see these paramecium those white organisms they're just kind of hanging out there they're not doing much and then you can also see all of these other little organisms moving around we're gonna go ahead and dive in just a little bit farther at about 40 times and see what these paramecium look like even closer and maybe we can catch a glimpse of what these other little tiny guys are so now that we dive in here at about 40 times you can see that paramecium just hanging out He's probably not too happy because he's squished between two pieces of glass. Uh, you can also see that other little guy shooting around in front of him. We're going to try to get an idea of what that is. Uh, that might be a rotifer, I'm pretty sure. That's probably some kind of a rotifer. And you can also see all of the other brown stuff around. Uh, that, those are the diatoms. You can see the, the elongated uh, structure to them. They kind of look like seeds. Uh, those are diatoms and uh, they're photosynthetic. They do strive off of some light. We're actually looking at these diatoms now at 100 times in dark field with oil immersion. So there's actually a little bit of oil between the lens of this microscope and the glass on the slide. And you can see these diatoms in their elongated shape. They look like seeds. You can also see there's some other round diatoms here as well. Now all of these guys are going to be found in newly cycling aquariums. This is really the fundamentals of the cycle. These diatoms and these microorganisms, these little green guys here, they're all going to be food for those paramecians and those other infusoria, those multicellular microorganisms that will help create a balance within your aquarium. It is very, very common to find these uh, microorganisms, these diatoms, and all of these single-celled uh, algaes in your aquarium when it is newly cycling. Uh, this is a very important part of the aquarium, and all of these little guys are gonna be food for all of the larger microorganisms. They're gonna really help create a solid balance with the nitrogen cycle within your aquarium and help consume all of those nitrates and nitrites. Now that brown color that you see coming from those diatoms is actually an oil that is created. It's inside of the diatom. Uh, this oil is created through photosynthesis from the light within the aquarium. Okay, so we are looking at the second specimen from the first aquarium. And this specimen definitely had a lot more green stuff. So I was uh, really excited to see this. Now you can see that there is an oligochaeta, some kind of a segmented worm with little hairs on its side at each segment. And you can see that he is, he just kind of uh, secreted, <laughs> he just released a little piece of green stuff there. And you can see that his belly is full of little green uh, single cell you know, plankton and whatnot. He's just running around finding which ones he enjoys eating the most. And uh, <clears throat> this guy looks harmful, but he is not. He's actually just an earthworm, some kind of a, what they would call a detritus worm. It's a segmented worm, but this is not kind of a, a, an intestinal nematode. So now that I've gone in here a little bit closer on this slide to about 40 times, you can see these little rotifer. Now this little guy has cilia on one end of his body there are these little hairs and they spin really really fast which actually help propel him through the water so these guys are going to just swim around they're kind of filter feeders and they're going to eat up some of these different uh, microalgaes and uh, some of these other little microorganisms that are actually smaller than them now all of these microorganisms that we're looking at now are definitely very beneficial to your aquarium. They're very beneficial to the ecosystem of the aquarium. All of these organisms are working to break down these diatoms and these microalgaes 
and clean up the aquarium. You can see that right here as this uh, detritus worm is consuming these microalgaes. And then right below him, you can also see a stentor on the left with some, uh, some cilia around the top head of them. You can see these little hairs that are spinning really, really fast. And then right to the right of that stentor, we have a paramecium there hanging out underneath of that detritus worm. Now you can see that that detritus worm is just full of those microalgaes uh, that are found on the side of that glass. So now we're looking at the first specimen of the second aquarium. This is the aquarium with all of the plants. Now, this was the sample that I took of the algae, of all of the like single-celled algaes and microplankton that are on the side of the aquarium. And uh, definitely very, very green stuff. Lots of green stuff. You see some long stem-like uh, algaes, and then you also can see these little round balls as well and um, even stuff smaller than that. So we're gonna go ahead and take a little closer look and see what this stuff looks like. So now we're looking at this algae at 10 times and there's lots of different kinds of algae in here, but I do not see a lot of organisms, larger microorganisms here to consume any of this uh, algae. So now that we are looking at these uh, single cell algaes at 40 times, you can actually see that there's lots of different little algaes that make up these clumps. It's not just like one species. Uh, there's little round ones, there's long ones, there's one that look a little bit more like plants. Uh, but most of these things are not even multicellular, they're just single-celled uh, single -celled organisms. So it's really interesting the differences between these two aquariums. The second Aquarium definitely has a lot more uh, little green uh, algaes and not a lot of organisms to consume these algaes. Now we're looking at the final specimen here. This was that string algae, obviously, that we saw growing in the second aquarium. Uh, this stuff, I really don't want it in the aquarium, I'll be honest. Uh, but it's really interesting under the microscope. We're only looking at this at four times. So I'm gonna go a little bit closer and we'll see what it looks like at 10 times. So now that we're looking at this string algae at 10 times, you can actually see the segments of this algae. We're gonna go ahead a little bit closer at about 40 times and we're gonna see just what those segments look like. So now that we've magnified this to 40 times, you can see those little segments in this string algae. Uh, they're just single cells and they're all stacked on each other and that's what makes up this string algae. So you can see here the structure of this string algae, all these individual little cells and these little cells kind of filled with that same kind of oil like the diatoms and these are actually going to eventually be consumed by other organisms uh, but there's definitely uh, a need for more organisms in this second aquarium. So I'm back here up in my office with these two aquariums and this is really interesting what we had an opportunity to see under the microscope. So this first aquarium which is actually um, three weeks older than the other one uh, has a pretty is pretty balanced in compared to the other one in regards that there's not as much green algaes and there there is a presence of microorganisms in place that are actually consuming stuff and kind of keeping a little bit of a balance. Now there, there are definitely some diatoms here on the glass. I let this tank cycle for a lot longer and just rest before I even put plants in it and before I ever put any kind of like aquatic like fish livestock. That made for a little bit better cycle in that respect. Tank could definitely use more plants right now even though there's not a lot of plants. It still isn't suffering with as much algae as this aquarium over here, which is, you know, only three weeks, uh, about three weeks old or so, and it's just covered in algae for a couple of reasons. Uh, not enough water changes, a super bright light right out of the gate, even though I only gave it five or six hours of light per day. Just a lot of plants coming from different places 
and shrimp and snails uh, that all had a part to play in the bioload of this aquarium but it definitely does not have the cycle as we saw under the microscope there's not that many uh, little microorganisms uh, that are consuming up these little algaes all these single-celled algaes and the string algae and stuff like that so um, there's definitely imbalance here because I forced this tank, I pushed it a little too hard, and that's, that's just how it's gonna happen on a microscopic level. So I have to go ahead and clean up both of these aquariums, a little bit of a water change, trim up some of these plants down here. But I hope this video helps some of you out there that are just setting up a new aquarium, just trying to cycle it and learn about the nitrogen cycle and just how to get a balance between all of the microorganisms that are not all seen with the naked eye. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you to all of you that like, comment, and share on all of my content. And remember guys, keep your tanks clean, your fish fed, and have fun.